Last night, of course, was the Super Bowl. And I have to say, the power of capitalism to basically use whatever it can, whatever is at hand to make money is truly astonishing. It was kind of bizarre to watch the Super Bowl, particularly the halftime show yesterday, and note that all these people who were rebels against the cause, these were folks who were rebelling against the system, systemic racism, here they are being paid by the NFL, which is one of the biggest corporations in America, the most powerful entertainment in the country, to sing songs on behalf of these co corporate overlords, these rebels against the cause. And meanwhile, the NFL is happy to make money and make ratings off of a group of people who in any sort of normal circumstances would have been canceled years ago. There are a lot of criminal convictions on that particular stage. There are a lot of lyrical violations of sort of social norms on that stage. I'm not talking about right-wing social norms. I'm not talking about Tipper Gore saying that we ought to have warnings on lyrics. I'm talking about left-wing social norms. But the fact is that capitalism can take the piss and vinegar out of pretty much anything. And that's what that halftime show was last night. Honestly, it, it, number one, it demonstrates how old our country is because you know this is now throwback music for people who are about my age. And I'm 38 and I was watching some of the Super Bowl with some friends last night who are you know early 40s and they were bopping out to music that they were listening to in high school because our entire culture now revolves around the artists of 20 years ago. And these are all a bunch of 50-year-old rappers. I mean, the, the fact, Mary J. Blige is 51 years old and this is the younger crowd now. Remember that for the past couple of Super Bowls, they've gone a little younger. Right? They did Bruno Mars, and then they did The Weeknd, and these are younger folks. But they went back to kind of the old, right? The classic rap gods of the, of the 1990s and early 2000s. And I just want to point out once more that the social standards that the left holds when it comes to culture just do not exist. They do not exist. And violence against women, apparently totally okay. You don't get canceled over that anymore, depending on who you are and what kind of art you perform. The lyrics that are overtly anti-gay, totally fine, so long as you also hate Donald Trump. So long as you are seen as a weapon against the system, the left is willing to take you back in. And hilariously, corporations are willing to use you as their spokespeople, and you're willing to take their money. This is really corrupt and perverse little tie, but I, you, you do have to appreciate the power of money making to really take any sort of power and edge out of the message and just turn it into pap that you, you pump into elevators. It really is kind of an amazing thing. Let me just point out who was on the stage last night during the Super Bowl halftime show, because this really did occur to me while I was watching it, is that the, the NFL has been attempting to get away from the, you know, we are the league that has a lot of criminal convictions routine. They, they've been attempting to, to get away from this. And so on the stage, they had Dr. Dre, who has been accused of multiple instances of violence against women, including assault of D. Barnes, who's convicted in 1991. Quote, people talk all this bleep, but you know, somebody F's with me, I'm going to F with them. A woman named Michelle, who was the mother of one of his children, accused him of domestic violence. Another woman named Terry B. accused Dre of assaulting her. He was convicted in 1992 of battery of a police officer. He apparently allegedly drove drunk in 1994. And now, he seems to have improved his life pretty dramatically, Dr. Dre, although in 2016, Suge Knight accused Dre of a kill for hire plot. But let's just say that, that these are offenses that in sort of a normal world would get you canceled these days, right? Because time is of no limit. When we go back, 20, 30 years and find stuff about people and destroy them. But Dr. Dre was leading this off as a great hero uh, of the Republic. And then he had Snoop Dogg, who, of course, has been arrested for everything from cocaine possession to first and second degree murder. He was acquitted on those charges, but arrested for them to drug and firearm possession to implication in a rape case. He wasn't arrested for that, but he was, there was an implication that he was involved. He was last arrested in 2012 for possession. And Snoop Dogg, of course, is now a hero of our culture. And by the way, in January, he cut a song that included the following lyrics. And I know it's always a risk when I read lyrics. So we're going to take this slowly. Okay, this is the following lyric. It was in, it was in January of this year. Quote, all you N-words out there, take your guns that you're using to shoot each other and start shooting these bitch-ass MFing police. That'll impress a MFing N-word like me. That was like January. And here he is in the biggest cultural event in America in February. Right? Rapping at the center of of the stage uh, at the behest of a major American corporation. You got 50 Cent up there who was arrested in 94 for cocaine trafficking in 2003 for criminal possession of a weapon, for battery in 2004 for jumping into a crowd to go after a person who threw a water bottle at him, in 2013 for five criminal charges, including one count of domestic abuse, domestic violence. And normally this stuff sort of gets you 
I, th- I thought that this was bad. I thought that even according to the left, I thought this stuff was bad. No, not too much. You have Eminem, right? Who famously was sort of pre-canceled because of all of his lyrics, including ones about violence against his, his ex-wife and about raping his mom and about stabbing gay people. All of that sort of stuff is in his lyrics. But then he said that he didn't like Trump and that, that of course, fixes everything. And of course, he was arrested twice in 2000 on gun charges. So you, you have to admire the power of the American capitalist system to ingest all of this radical stuff and then just bleh, vomit it back out as commercial selling stuff, as, as, as the product that normal Americans will consume. It, it really is an amazing, amazing thing. I thought the best example of this last night was Eminem. So Eminem, he kneels for a full minute in the middle of this halftime show. And he just, he just kneels and puts his hand on his head for, for a full minute, right, to demonstrate that he is in touch with the Black Lives Matter movement and with the needs of black people. And it's so funny how the media pretend that this is somehow controversial now. This is the best. It's so funny. So Eminem does this. And Deadline runs an entire piece, Deadline Hollywood. They run this entire piece. The NFL must have been shocked at this, shocked. And then the NFL came out with a statement. And their statement was, oh, no, he did this during rehearsal. We knew, like, the whole time that he was going to do this. So just to understand what the NFL did here. In 2016, Colin Kaepernick, a backup quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers who'd been benched for the immortal Blaine Gabbert because he sucks. He knelt for the national anthem on the basis, by the way, of a police shooting that apparently was justified. And uh, this is after he wore socks that, that compared police to pigs and all of this. And this created a mass, massive national controversy, right? The NFL got engulfed in it. Now, fast forward six years, and Eminem is kneeling for a full minute on the stage to the NFL's approval. The NFL is making money off the kneeling now. That's the power of capitalism, guys. It's, it's so funny. The left thinks that they own the culture, and to a certain extent, they do. Because when corporations ingest leftism and then spew it back out, in a sort of sanitized form. People still ingest the leftism in a, in a sanitized form. But there is something very, very humorous about the NFL, which was targeted with these protests. Now taking the protests, spinning them around and making cash off of them. There's something really highly hilarious about that. I mean, and this is the message, by the way, from I would say the mainstream political left. The mainstream political left will take radical messaging. They will ingest it. They will sanitize it. And then they will spew it back out there for money which is why you saw in the end zone, and the NFL has been doing this for, for the last year, really since the Black Lives Matter stuff cropped up over George Floyd's the past, almost two years. They, they started putting at the end zone the words end racism on one side and it takes all of us on the other, which of course ends racism. I mean, as we all know, if there's one thing that ends racism in the United States, it is putting the words end racism at the back of the end zone in an NFL game because there are tons of just vicious white racists who are watching the NFL game. And until now, they're ready to go burn a cross on their black neighbor's lawn. But now they saw the words end racism at the back of the end zone. They're like, oh man, F racism. Racism's the worst now. I saw it said end racism in the back of the end zone. Roger Goodell tells me it's time to end race. And not only that, it takes all of us. Racism ended. Or alternatively, these corporations are playing you. If you're a radical leftist and you think that these people are your friends, they are playing you. And by the way, if you're on the right and you think these corporations are your friends, they're not. They're willing to use whatever is at hand. If they feel like they can make a buck off the woke by mirroring woke messaging, they will. They have no principles. They don't care. It's all about just making the money for them. That's all. And, and the Democratic Party is the same way. So right before the Super Bowl, Joe Biden went on national TV because we have this dumb tradition where the president of the United States hijacks this giant cultural event and does these interviews. By the way, I, I love the fact that we are still social distancing. So we've got Joe Biden sitting 83 feet away from Lester Holt okay, before, before the Super Bowl. Both of them octuple vaxxed. 70% of their body weight made up the vax at, the, at this point. And by the way, everybody unmasking. And, um, and Joe Biden then decides that he's going to rip on the NFL. Now, you think the NFL is upset about this? The NFL isn't upset about this one iota because the NFL will find a way to make money off of this, which is why you have Roger Goodell saying, oh, yeah, yeah, of course we're racist. Of course. Also, if black Americans, if you could give us more of your money, in fact, we'll have a halftime show featuring many of your favorite artists, as long as you keep giving us more of your money. If we say we're racist, will you give us more of your money? So Joe Biden is this for the Democratic Party. His policies can be as bad for black Americans as he wants them to be. And his policies are indeed crappy for black Americans. His inflation is hitting black Americans harder than it is hitting white Americans. The unemployment that will likely follow an, in an increase in the interest rate will be worse for black Americans than it will for white Americans. He doesn't care about that. He cares about making a buck, which is why he goes around on the road saying that all of his political opponents are people who would have been Jim Crow racist back in the day. Because just keep if he mirrors the messages you want him to mirror, will you love him? So here is Joe Biden 
ripping on the NFL for, for its supposed racism and not having more black coaches. Says Joe Biden, who goes around bragging about how he worked with segregationists in the 60s and 70s. Like, really, it's amazing stuff. Here's the president of the United States, the Lesser Holt. A league that is made up of so many athletes of color as well as so diverse that there's not enough African-American qualified coaches to, quote, to manage these NFL teams. It just seems to me that it's a standard that that they'd want to live up to. Uh, an old white man is telling you that the NFL is super duper racist. Yeah, that's 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 great. And by the way, Roger Goodell doesn't care. He not care. As long as you keep, keep pumping that money into his pocket, he does not care. And neither does Joe Biden. Joe Biden doesn't care about any of this stuff. Just vote for him and give him your money. And keep voting for him as a 90% block if you're black and, and he'll be a happy camper. He, does, he doesn't care about any of these messages. It's ridiculous. It's really, really stupid. By the way, I'm just going to point out this as well. Remember, Donald Trump was very, very bad. He was very bad. He commented on Colin Kaepernick. He said he shouldn't kneel for the national anthem. And that made him terrible. How, why would he even comment on cultural events like this? Why would he get involved in the culture wars, Donald Trump? Democrats have been there for 50 years in the middle of the culture wars. There's Joe Biden commenting on the NFL. No one seems to care. It's fine. After all, he's a Democrat. He's allowed to say whatever he wants about the NFL. He's allowed to criticize the NFL. He's allowed to criticize NFL players or NFL coaches. He can do whatever he wants because he's saying the things that the left wants him to say. And they know this. They know this. Meanwhile, final note on the Super Bowl. So they still have a mask mandate for children in California. Every kid in L.A. County is going to go to school today with a mask on. Here is a compendium of some of the celebrities at the Super Bowl not wearing masks. By the way, no one was wearing a mask yesterday at the Super Bowl. And the L.A. County put out a big list, a, a big ad. Like, you should all put on masks. Well, there's Jay-Z not wearing a mask. There's Matt Damon not wearing a mask. You see, can you spot a single person in any of these? There's Charlize Theron. Anyone wearing a mask? Anyone surrounding these people wearing a mask? Anything? There's LeBron. Is he wearing a mask? No, of course he's not wearing a mask. There's J-Lo and Ben Affleck, the awkwardest celebrity couple of all time. There they are. There's Emmett Smith. Anybody? Not, not a mask. Anywhere in sight. Nowhere. There are no masks because they are the special people. They are so special. The science changed magically right before the Super Bowl. Not for the kids, of course. The kids are going to go to school today and they're going to be masked up in L.A. County. But at least Jay-Z did not have to wear a mask. And that's really the important thing, I think. The elites who create your culture and ingest your messages and spew them back out to you for money and are the richest among us. And remember, all the people on the stage who, are, who have spent their lives rapping about the evils of the American system are some of the richest people in America. Eminem is worth $230 million by last estimate. Dr. Dre is worth way the hell more than that. He's a billionaire, Dr. Dre. Rapping about the terrors and horrors of evil racist America. And it's, all about the, it's all about the Benjamins, you might say. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.